I'm done with occupying indigenous land. I'm done with supporting borders. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm done with it. People have been occupying this land for more than 500 years and it's not ours to do that with. It's not fair and it's time that we stand up and we use our communities to end it. And it would be really great if, you know, everyone uses the General Assemblies because we have a great movement here inter internationally. This is happening everywhere, you know. It started in the Middle East and it came over here. But we need to use that. We need to use our General Assemblies, our communication, and our communities to put messages out there that we are done occupying indigenous people's lands. We're done with the borders here on the Akamil Atam land. They want to do a freeway. They're trying yeah. to build yeah. Loop 202. Yes. Where they want that built is on Akmiel Autumn land. And it's not fair. It's been happening far too long. They've been trying to do that since the 80s. We need to shut that shit down. Shut that down. We need to go to the ADOT meetings and occupy the ADOT meetings. And we need to tell them enough. No more Loop 202. No more Loop 202. We don't want it on the res. We don't want it on their sacred mountain. South Mountain is a place that is very sacred to them. Yes. There's very many very things. True. There's, you know, it's a sacred place. You don't put an eight lane freeway through something that people have been worshiping for hundreds of years. It comes in the same vein of colonization that has been killing these people and putting borders on their land. Enough is enough. Enough, enough. is enough. enough is no, yeah, we have other people hey, it, it, here it. also they're not hey, playing like enough. Up. And in like place meeting, that, they have many issues happening there also. They have extractive industries like Peabody Coal going on to their land and putting up mines. They're part of Alec. We need to use Occupy Phoenix as a tool to talk about everything going on in this state. We, we say a lot with Alec, one of the main things has been to expose Alec. Locally, we need to expose what's going on to the indigenous people of this state. And not, you know, Freeport McMorrin. They kill indigenous people all over the country. That's why we did that great thing today. We went there and said enough is enough. We gotta take everything and go full circle and reconnect it locally take the Occupy movement and turn it into a deoccupying and unoccupying movement. Freeport McMorrin is partners with Rio Tinto. Rio Tinto owns Resolution Copper and what they want to do is, is they want to build the largest copper mine in North America no. on Apache land. Do we no. want that? No. 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 We can no. stop it. We can stop it. What we have to do though is we Your have to do our action is dead and worthless to connect with the local indigenous struggles because every time we say occupy this and occupy that, we are invisibilizing them. And it's not fair. They've had it happening for hundreds of years. We gotta use our movement and go down to Freeport McMorrin and occupy them and say, you cannot build a mine on Apache land and do what you're doing to indigenous people everywhere. No more! No more! No more! No more! And in our everyday lives, you gotta share these stories. When you're out here, you gotta let people know. You know, with these borders on autumn land, enough is enough. Be your own leader. Way. Come let people know. You know like we, gotta doing, ADOT, we gotta go to these ADOT meetings. We gotta shut them said. down. People, a couple weeks ago, from the reservation, people that are Akamil Autumn came, and what ADOT did was they refused to allow them to speak. No. We can't have that happening. We can't have the indigenous people of this area being invisibilized further. We need to take this movement, and we need to go to these meetings, and where this is happening, we need to shut that shit down. Yeah! Shut it down! Yeah. Shut, shut it down! Yeah. Shut it down! Yeah. Shut it down. Occupy uh, ADOT! So, I, I guess, um, I, I, I'm a student and I have a child, so I, I have a hard time going to the General Assemblies. I would like to come to one, and I would like to see a proposal from Occupy Phoenix. Other, other ones have done this, Colorado and the ones in North Carolina. You know, take, take this week, 
think about it and really, you know, think about what it means to you to be a part of something that continues the occupation of indigenous people's land. And what I would hope is, you know, through witnessing this violence that the police have done for Alec and what they do, you know, every week they come down here and arrest people for what? For sleeping. That's right. right. Sitting. You know, we got to take this, use your General Assembly, make a proposal that, you know, people need to think about it longer, but we need to turn this in to a deoccupy movement. We need, we need to get a statement Re from our Occupy Reclaim. saying, decolonize. Decolonize is we're gonna, a better word, We're going to turn the tables. We're going to stop invisibilizing indigenous people of the areas. We're going to start going to these meetings. We're going to shut down these meetings. We're going to occupy Freeport McMoran. We're going to occupy ADOT. And when we hear something's going on with the border, we're going to go down there and help too. Yeah. When we hear yeah. something's happening in Flagstaff, we're going to go up there too, because yeah. we're a movement. And we're strong. Yeah. And we're utilizing the love for our communities to make them stronger and shut this down. I know if you're going to be going to Salt River, you'll realize that that's one of Alex's corporate members. Uh, uh. <laughs> yes. They belong to Alan. Okay. Um, she was talking about uranium mining. There is a bill coming up in front of your legislature. There's a bill coming up in front of your Arizona legislature soon to allow uranium mining on one of the banks of the Grand Canyon. All right. Tell us. Okay. So that's just a couple of thing, little things I thought I would add to all the great information she was giving you there. <laughs> um, personally, I spent a lot of my time with some other people researching not only Alec, but the rest of the Koch brothers' cabal. Alec is not in this by themselves. Alec is essentially a legislative writing arm of that has more than a hundred different groups associated with it. And we'll get into some of what they are. But in preparing to occupy Alec, you've learned what a little bit of what, what Alec is and how they've increasingly manipulated all of our politics since 1973, when Alec was first formed. We all know about the banksters and what they've done to America, but they've done it to the whole world's economy. We've been in touch with people in Great Britain uh, an association of Alec there is called the Atlantic Bridge. It just brought down their defense minister, and it may very well bring down the conservative government of uh, David Cameron over there. They've been consulting with us to get information about Alec and what it is that they do. But, you know, a lot of you here have suffered very, very badly at the hands of Alec and the banks. I mean, how many of you are living day to day wondering how long is your mortgage bank going to let you stay in your own houses? But you've got to realize it's not just the banks that's been trying to kill our economy. As I've read through the Facebook page posts at a number of Occupy sites that I belong to, I see a lot of speculation about corporations and the role that they play in all of this. Well, I'm here tonight to tell you what Hillary Clinton once called the vast right-wing conspiracy. It's alive, it's well, and it's very active. Now, I've come to Phoenix from Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay? Uh, where, incidentally, Alex's next meeting will be held next May. So you should all be planning on coming to Charlotte in May for the next protest against Alec at one of their big meetings. Yeah! 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 Short of, I'm personally short of violence. We've been doing everything we can to expose Alec. I personally sent the names of all of the members of the North Carolina State Legislature who belong to Alec, to our Democratic governor. I sent the same information to my Democratic State Legislator. Never heard back from either one of them. So I sent the information to the editor of the Charlotte Observer. That's the big newspaper in Charlotte. It's a McClatchy-owned paper. McClatchy is one of the few news organizations that doesn't belong to Alec. 
Um, but again, my letter, no interest, no response. So the NBC affiliate in Raleigh, our state capital, where you've got Duke, North Carolina, NC State, Wake Forest, where they tried to take over the school system to privatize education. Okay? They had done a series about Alec and their takeover of the Wake County Public Schools. This was funded by Americans for Prosperity, an Alec group. The Tea Party members, who are owned lock, stock, and barrel by Americans for Prosperity and the Koch brothers, um, were there trying to get it all passed. But you know something? In all of the articles written about it, in all of the television broadcasts written about it, no mention of Allen, no merit, no mention of the Heritage Foundation, which you probably many of you have heard of, which did the research to to get the legislation ready to write and be appropriate to to, to put into uh, Arizona here. Um, I contacted the TV reporter, talked to her. Oh, please send me the information. So I, I crushed it out, got it to her that afternoon. Never heard from her again. I went as far as to send the names of all 100 members of the United States Congress who are ALEC alumni uh, to President Obama. I got back a very nice, please donate to my campaign letter. <laughs> I tried the Washington Post, never even got a reply. But that's better than the reply my colleague Bruce Felk got when he sent it to our country's self-proclaimed national newspaper, the New York Times. His response was deleted, unread. People, there are state legislators out there and members of Congress who are fighting these obstructionists, but they're just treating the symptoms of ALEC and its activities. They're not treating the disease. Their apparent refusal to act against Dalek is inexcusable for those who would be leaders of America. I'm sorry, I just don't get it. But our neglecting to, uh, to act against Dalek and the entire Koch brothers cabal is absolutely not acceptable. Who are we waiting for to step forward to save our Constitution? Not just the parts we approve, like the entire, you know, like the Tea Party and ALEC members, where they don't like this amendment, they don't like this amendment, they don't like this, but they revere the Constitution. If we don't stop ALEC and the other members of the cabal, we're headed away from democracy and towards a corporatocracy. And a whole different statute and bylaw state. You betcha. Corporatocracy is just a nice new word for fascism. Exactly. And that's exactly what Al, that's the fascist state that's envisioned by Alec and the Koch brothers for 40 years. Now, control the reason that a lot of people haven't heard about Alec. We know about it. We spend time on the internet researching, looking for information about the causes that are dear to our own hearts. Um, in fact, I first learned about Alec watching Rachel Maddow, who put the, connected the dots beautifully to show who is connected to Alec, their strategy of attacks on the unions in Wisconsin as part of a strategy to eliminate the left wing completely. That is their, one of their goals. Well, Rachel did her show and promised follow-ups, but they never came. Ed Schultz, Lawrence O'Donnell, Al Sharpton, all did one segment, no follow-ups. Yet people still refer to the liberal media. The media is so liberal, why hasn't MSNBC followed up on anything having to do with Alec? Now, Keith Olbermann on current TV, even last night had coverage of what happened here in Phoenix yesterday. But unfor he's called out Alec a bunch of times. But unfortunately, he's got very limited reach on current TV. 
He's the bane of the conservative mo movement, so Alec likes it that way. But conservative corporations, in most cases, own the media. TV, radio, print, digital. Owned by ALEC members. Time Warner, Gannett Publications, Cox Communications, Comcast, among others, just in the news industry. Their corporate mo members spend a fortune on advertising. Big advertisers, Anheuser-Busch, Miller, Coors, Kraft Foods, Frito-Lay, Gerber Baby Foods, Mars, Outback Steakhouse, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble, Sara Lee, Wendy's, Arby's, Nestle's, and Yum Brands, which is Kentucky Fried Chicken, Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, Long John Silver's, A&W. And even Unilever's into this, which is Lipton Tea, Briars, Country Crock, and Ben and Jerry's. Sorry to say that. Oh, <laughs> Going to a concert? You're going to get your tickets from Ticketmaster or Live Nation. They both are members of Alex corporate uh, group. Healthcare companies, United Healthcare and Humana, big members of Alex. Pharmaceutical companies actually hold more positions on Alex's board than any other industry. Insurance companies, electric companies, oil companies, Walmart, Microsoft, Motorola, Monsanto, General Electric, Geico, the banks, General Motors, Chrysler, Caterpillar, heavy equipment, Boeing aircraft, the list goes on. There's over 300 of them. But that's enough. That's too much. They're all been outed in Alec Exposed. You can find Alec Exposed on, face, on the internet, on Facebook. See what they have to say. 800 bills of model legislation that they've proposed for this country Alec are exposed. all listed there. Alec Exposed. That's right. Alec Exposed. Now, as an, I used to be a retail buyer many years ago. I understand the power, the power of, of advertising dollars. Can you imagine the clenched fingers on those media buyers at MSNBC when their Alec partner companies talk about, well, maybe we ought to move our advertising someplace else this season. Next time you're watching MSNBC at night, take a look who the sponsors are of those shows. And you will find many of them are ALEC corporate members, which you can see listed at ALEC Exposed. You can also see it on my own personal Facebook page, which is called Resist the Privatization of America. <coughs> or... Uh, they happen to be part of Citibank. Uh, Citibank, yep. Yeah. Uh, you've also got people for the American way that are out there who've just published over a hundred page article just on Alex's impact on Arizona. At DLTP, Bob Sloan has just published a 76 page article on Alex's federal connections, which go all the way up to the Supreme Court. <laughs> go to these websites, do your reading. Then when it's time to go to bed at night, your conscience will keep you awake. Now, when President Obama talks about his jobs bill, he talks about the election still being 14 months away. And about we, the people here, who sent politicians to Washington. We, the people here, who hired them, not having the luxury of, of, of waiting those 14 months. Uh, people are living week to week paycheck to paycheck, some even day to day. They need help and they need it now. This is the unfortunate truth in America today and Alec and the Koch brothers and many of their other groups are behind this. We human citizens are no longer represented by those we've elected. We've become the silent 99%. Now, Obama also explained how most Americans really don't care about politics because we have real life concerns. In America, 
hard work and responsibility is supposed to result in a fair shake for everybody. But unfortunately, life just isn't fair. The entire concept of the American dream has become one which, even though many people still believe in it, it just plain falls apart because of Alec and the Koch brothers and all the rest of the groups that are involved in this. Do people here know what a muckety chart is? Have you ever seen one? It, it's a computerized thing that's done that shows links between groups or organizations. You're allowed to put 100 links onto one chart. When Bob Sloan was working on his chart for Alec, he couldn't even get them on there. There were too many. That's how big Alec is. Now, what made our country great was the fact that it used to be that anybody could make it. But unfortunately, the past tense there is now appropriate. It's Alec's world. Just two years ago, a new majority was elected to Congress under the guise of jobs, jobs, jobs. Where is the legislation to create these jobs? Has anybody seen it? Heard it? No. It doesn't exist. These are the people who are elected to represent us. Okay? What does demanding voter ID at the polls, at a tremendous cost to the states, North Carolina, it's going to cost $1.8 million that we don't have to That's enforce voter state. ID. That's one state. That's one state, yes. Out of 50. Yes. Okay, so figure out real quickly. <laughs> That's a lot of money that could be going to education. It could be going to teaching kids science. It could be going to, to restoring Indian lands. It could be going to any number of positive things. But it's not. Um, the Congress is now considering extending the payroll tax cuts and unemployment benefits. Conservatives oppose this. Well, from one side of their mouths, they tell us how we can't allow the Bush tax cuts to expire because the job creators in the top 1% would be getting a tax increase, which would stop them from creating new jobs. Nobody, they say, should have their taxes increased in today's economy. But from the other side of their mouths, they're telling us, oh, it's okay to let this tax cut for the middle class expire and effectively raise our taxes. What am I missing here other than class warfare being generated by Alec and our Congress? And as for this 1% being job creators, where are the jobs that they've created China. since the Bush tax cuts were first proposed? <laughs> You're right. China is one of the places. I've spent a lot of time there, I know. The average book, according to Think Progress, and Reverend Jackson was referring to something very much like it, the average book tax, Bush tax cut for the 1% this year will be more than the average income of the entire other 99%. Those aren't jobs you feel trickling down on you people. Now, we've got this problem of insufficient revenues which have to be dealt with. And they spent us into poverty. This means raising revenues, not cutting taxes. Uh, oaths to Grover Norquist don't mean shit. They does not supersede their oaths of office to uphold the Constitution. Now, when you've got Alex corporate members creating our laws with our legislators sitting across from each other in private rooms voting for model legislation to benefit these corporate members, not the country, the corporate members, who needs lobbyists? Alec is now the number one supplier of legislation in the United States and they're destroying our country for the benefit of the profits of their corporate members. Now, it's bad enough that the corporations can spend tax-deductible money to get these one-on-one -on -one meetings with our legislators at luxury resorts like the Westin and Tierless there. But we now know from Bob Sloan's research into the federal forum 
that Alec has bought and brought our Congress into the fold as well. But should there be legal problems with any Alec legislation? No problem. The judiciary has been brought into the fold too. Read Bob's report on the internet. I, we've got five members of the Supreme Court with ties to the cabal who are wined and dined just like legislators are by Alec by another cabal member which is called Free, which deals with economic environmental issues. As for reducing the size of government, history shows us repeatedly that conservatives always increase the size of government as they intrude deeper and deeper into our private lives. And this is going to change? Why? But because of our inability to get left-wing policies discussed in the mainstream media, it's hard to fault people for not really knowing about Alan. We need to get around the mainstream media to get our message directly to the voters. Okay? We're talking to ourselves here. We're preaching to the choir. We know what they're doing. We have to get this message out to the rest of the population. Now, to accomplish this, our group is, putting, is organizing a bus tour of the United States to bring teach-ins to as many people in as many locations as time and money permit. This is going to be a mobile platform for progressives to awaken voters and carry a unified message to them. If you'll see any of us, we'd be glad to give you a flyer about our, our tour, and hopefully you can find a way to make a donation. But that's just the start of your fight against the people who would hold you down just for their benefit. And that's what they're doing. History shows again that a bunch of liberals and progressives to band together to fight something even as insidious as the cabal, it's like herding cats. Individual groups, each separated, attacking individually against something as big and powerful as Alec, you're skipping pebbles off of them. This is a minor inconvenience for them here. That they really don't care because we haven't made them care. You gotta make them care. You bet. Our Save, our Save the States bus tour going to be going city to city, town to town, state to state. We'll bypass the mainstream media with news coverage in the local markets. More people watch local news, national news anyways. So let's go after the local news. In closing, I'd just like to let you participate in a little bit of market research we've been doing. If you would just email your friends who you have not told about Alec and ask them a very simple question. Have they ever heard of Alec? Okay, we've done this in, in North Carolina from our resist group and 95% of respondents had never heard of Alec. We had a lot of work to do. And if, for those people who get their news from the mainstream media, They've, that's why they've never heard from Alan. Not Fox. <laughs> yeah, definitely not Fox. <laughs> totally biased. Fox, Fox, facts. Remember that. That's all with double X's. In totally biased. <laughs> Thank you all very much for your time. Thank you. And yeah. please remember what we need Thank to get out there. Save our state. <laughs>